All right. Hello, everybody. It's the Maista from Brews and Tunes. Cheers. Uh, very, very excited today. I am chatting with the one and only Joe Howard, uh, fucking monster drummer of multiple bands. Of course, um, you know, touring with uh, Narcotic Wasteland, um, you know, a drummer of Despise the Sun. Uh, man, you're you're in a bunch of bands. I mean, it, you, I think, uh, what do you got currently, like five or six bands you're you're playing in right now? yeah i think it's five technically yeah <laughs> nice yeah busy guy busy guy um that's cool that's great yeah how you doing man my friend doing great doing great uh just got over some like food poisoning just feeling alive again oh good yeah yeah nasty oh yeah that's that's no fun i've, I've had food poisoning a couple times in my life and it's pretty brutal yeah um, yeah it was brutal <laughs> yeah. yeah you feel like you're dying it's yeah yeah, not not fun at all. Not fun. Um, so I'm glad you're healthy and 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 back in business and, and ready to go. And you have uh, some pretty exciting news. I think they just got announced um, just in the last couple of days. I'll, I'll let you tell that. Yeah, uh, we just got on a narcotic wasteland, as in we uh, just got on a tour with Accept in October, Very cool. and some other cool dates coming down the line. Nice. Very yeah, cool. have to do with that. So. Yeah, we, and yeah, man. Except, yeah, what a what a killer band. So, oh, through the wall, <laughs> man. Fuck yeah, yeah. I'm excited be... to hear some of those epic songs for sure. Yeah, I was kind of a, a fan for a while with my buddy Leonard. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's exciting. That'll be cool. And you just got off tour. Um, you know, Narcotic Wasteland. You guys were just touring with Malevolent Creation not too long ago. I mean, just finished up yeah. a couple weeks ago, I think, right? yes sir yeah how was that how was that i bet that was amazing it was great it was long it was uh six weeks which probably in the future i'd say probably five weeks is good <laughs> <laughs> but now that i'm back home it's like i could go out for another six weeks nice nice uh malevolent creation those dudes are super awesome uh i had a blast beat with them and uh yeah just some great laughs and we're still just we're still in the like the group chat from the tour so i still get like message i was getting some laughs and like some videos from reminiscing nice. from those dudes earlier today actually oh nice that's great yeah i feel bad i missed uh when you guys played salt lake city i, I missed that show um it was just yeah bad timing for me you know with my work schedule and kind of what's going on and yeah i'm still kicking myself i really wanted to see you guys live and just couldn't couldn't make it uh, unfortunately and i heard I had, I had friends that saw you in other cities throughout the nation and everybody was you know that i talked to was like oh man you missed a killer show you should have gone i'm like i know like i'll sleep when i'm dead it's you know that's that's the uh -huh. philosophy i should have stuck with and gone to the show i'm yeah man i know what you mean but sometimes you kind of get tired you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you gotta you gotta get that sleep or else you're worthless when you are out you're right yeah well and it was like you know it's like an hour drive for me to the venue and i get up at five uh in the morning oh, to work so it was like oh man i'm gonna that's gonna kill me uh, and i got to that was kind of a weird show oh anyway. yeah it was like uh it turned out to be like an after party Oh, really? For another show that was down the street, like a DRI show or something like that. I can't oh, remember. wow. There was like a sold out like DRI show, I'm pretty sure, like right down the street at the next venue. Oh, wow. And so naturally, our show at that moment was dead. Uh, and so we ended up opting to start it instead of 8. We started it at like 10 p.m. or something like that. Oh, wow. And then... Uh, had the promoter dude go down to the dri show with some flyers and like pass it out saying here we got the after party show down here oh nice which wasn't planned that way but it sort of worked out because when we played there was actually people there it's nice. pretty awesome yeah that's smart that's a that's a smart promoter <laughs> that's a good thing. yeah which in reno was kind of the same thing reno nevada but it was actually planned and it was super cool actually Oh, nice. Uh, it was like the Goat Horse slash Brujeria oh, show cool. down the street. I was like I'm trying to think. There was another band I wanted to see on there. But yeah, Goat Horror, Brujeria. And then we we played the after party show down the street in nice. Vegas, or not Vegas, uh, Reno, Nevada. Very cool. Yeah, in fact, I uh, 
I interviewed Ronnie Palmer the next day. And, oh, uh, yeah. And we ended up pushing the time because he was so tired um, because you guys had played so late. Um, yeah. Cause I think he said they went on at one o'clock in the morning. And uh, so he's like, Hey, can we push this out a little bit? I'm like, of course. Yeah. That, that's no problem. But yeah, he was, he was pretty wiped out. He said, but yeah, he, he said it was great. It was a killer show. He said, so, yeah, it was way sweeter planned. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. Um, so what else you got going on? I mean, you always have a lot going on. You're a you're a busy drummer. Um, um, basically, I'm keeping it to like pretty much three main projects right now: Narcotic Wasteland, of course. Uh, I have a band with my brother Jake and with Leonard from Cephalic Carnage called Neuromorphic. Cool. Yeah, great band. Yeah. And that's like uh started off as a sunday project and then uh now we're kind of getting some sick gigs and shit too as well um that's gonna be there's some stuff in the works for that we're gonna we're actually in the recording stages of our full length for that oh cool yeah, um, yeah your ep is great yeah the little three song i thought it was super rough i was super unhappy with it oh, so yeah. it'll be it'll be great to have like uh, an actual we kind of just released those songs just to catch the name so like nobody like stole the name basically oh, okay. and uh ended up yeah we're gonna re-record those songs as well as like four others for the for the full length release that we're gonna do oh, okay cool and so i've tracked uh scratch drums for it already and we've, we've done all the tempo mapping and i've tracked the scratch drums cool. and they're actually in the re the the recording tracking the other instrument stages right now oh, okay and that band you sing in that band right yeah sing and drum yeah cool cool do you Good write on the lyrics for leonard the... oh, okay do you write on the yeah. songs and the lyrics for that band as well um well i try and leave it, it ends up being like me and uh, either me and one other person write the riffs for the song. So any given song could be like, it could be me and Jake's riff or me and Keith's riff or like we'll kind of riff and then we'll com combine like two or more to, to complete it. I'm pretty good at composition <clears throat> and like creating like the, what's it called? The, the changes from one riff to another. Okay. Kind of theming them together and then uh you know it's pretty much in-house writing experience whereas opposed to narcotic wasteland uh like dallas will send me like a full ass demo with drums and guitars and solos and lyrics all on the shit already hmm. before i even hear it which is crazy <laughs> professional and crazy cool but uh also yeah it's just another way of writing to where we just all sit in the same room and hash it out right then and Keith's got a little recording. The guitarist Keith Sanchez uh, has a little recording studio set up in his basement. So I'll just go and play on his his kid Xavier's drums, and we'll just kind of do a live recording of that. Then and then we'll try. We'll piece together a song during a sesh, maybe one or two hours, and then try and play it all the way through on the recording. And then whenever we mess up or whatever, if it's too late, we'll stop. And then we'll actually like just kind of like seam the parts together in Reaper, which is the DAW we're using. Okay. And uh, yeah, it comes out to be a whole song. And then we'll listen back and we'll all kind of learn that sort of. And we'll have ideas for changes. And then next time we come together, we'll we'll basically have that song finished cool. instrumentally. Nice. And then I'm trying to leave most of the lyric writing to Leonard. Okay. Uh, he's like the lyrical madman. He's the, he's the, I don't know. I've always like really loved Safali Carnage's lyrics. Yeah. Uh, he's just super brilliant with his wordplay and everything. So I let him write most of the stuff. If he asks me, he's like, what do you think about this or whatever? I'll, I'll throw out some lyrical ideas. I often get a uh, little rants of thought that I can shit out basically to help. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> That's good. But, well, yeah. So there's <laughs> that. And then the third band uh, to get back to the question is Fields of Elysium. Oh, yeah. In New Mexico. Uh, dudes are super inspiring, super technical, super beautiful tunes. 
I would check out their second album, or sorry, third album, huh. In Ancient Contemplation. Okay. Uh, they're all without me so far. I'm actually in the mix of recording and tracking the fourth album with them as oh, well. Cool. Um, so, yeah, like I just jumped on that and on Narcotic Wasteland, like 2020. Yeah. Jumped on both projects at that point. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like with... Um... With neuromorphic, it's it's a very collaborative, very organic. You know, especially the the writing process, the recording process. Sounds like it's a, it's yeah. It sounds like very cool. Like just this very organic band. You know, everybody kind of playing off of each other and and working together. It sounds like a, a cool experience. You know, kind of what you want a band to be like. Yeah. Well, as far as me and my brother writing. Uh... I've been in a band, I was in a band called Scalafrea with him for 18 years. Oh, wow. So like from 2002, I guess 16 years, if my math serves. 2002 to like 2018, 2019. Oh, sweet. I got pancakes waiting <laughs> now. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. that's, that's Maria. Uh, I actually am doing a project with her as well. Oh, wow. Uh, it is nameless right now, but... Uh, we have a name in mind. I'm not sure if we're going to actually use it, but she plays some wicked piano. Oh, cool. And I'll, I'll do like some like death metal drumming over it. Oh, interesting. Possibly some weird lyrics, some dark, weird lyrics over I it. I like it. That's cool. That's really cool. That I'm super excited about. We have like two albums like in the works. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's just like pumping shit out. Like I went on tour with Narcotic and I came back and she had like six other songs left or something like that. Oh wow. She got a whole another album ready for me to track drums on. So Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah so once that just, releases, that'll be super fun. Yeah, you're just such a prolific musician. It's so cool. Like you've got all these projects going on. Like yeah, I, I I admire your energy and and yeah, I'm a little jealous of how much energy and and focus you have. It's it's cool that you can can you know do all of this? I'm actually tired as fuck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine. I would imagine. And well, then you also have we haven't talked despise the sun as well. We, we didn't really talk about that. Uh, yeah, uh, Don Evans commissioned me to do a couple tracks. That's pretty much what that started out as, and uh, that's still basically where it's at. I'm still working on the second track for him. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and I've played with don before uh in despise the sun i've done a couple of shows like we did a little a couple runs with him oh cool. small small runs together and then uh he always used to host the uh, foothills gut fest which was in colorado springs oh nice he was like the guy that hosted those and he always liked scalafrea to be on those so naturally i've been to almost every fest of his um he kind of discontinued it the past, I want to say, five years or something like that. He hasn't done it. Uh, but w one of the times he did, the reason why I'm saying is because we did like an improv set. Oh, cool. Actually, on the fest, he's like, "You want? we had a band drop. We have a spot uh, that we could fill. He's like, you want to just go and bust an improv set? And I was like, sure. Mm -hmm. And so we got on stage and we just started like doing blasting and stuff and just started playing to each other. It turned out to be some pretty sick songs, like right off the top of our heads. That's cool. That's cool. And, and so, that's, yeah, that's that a was sign a, of true musicianship right there. You know, like, yeah, being able to get up on stage and just, yeah, play off of each other and make stuff up on the fly. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's impressive. Thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of like the, the time we kind of realized we could, jam with each other so yeah i'm trying to throw that in the mix too as much as i can uh throw some of that i have a couple other commission pieces that people are asking me to do oh cool uh i'm like trying to like charge like you know like a 100 bucks a song or something like that nice. just to record some studio drums working on my mix uh all that sort of stuff here in the room nice oh nice wow that's such a great set Yep, that's very the cool gym. nice yeah that is great yeah little set up i was playing starcraft <laughs> nice awesome nerd <laughs> ah 
that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, I was curious, how did you get involved with uh, Narcotic? Did, did did they contact you? Did you, you know, try out for them or kind of how did that? Um, that was kind of a, like most of my life is like the opportunities I've had have been all pretty much serendipitous or hmm. serendipity, if you will. Uh, I was at NAM. I was had to charge my phone. So I sat down on the floor in the convention center near a charger and near a wall outlet and I charged my phone. So I was just scrolling through like Facebook. Uh, shout out to Mike Caputo from, he was in Rings of Saturn. Now he's doing Brand of Sacrifice. Oh, cool. Uh, sick drummer, bro. Uh, just saw a post. He was like, hey, anybody could do this project I can't do and need to be able to blast. And I just happened to try out for uh, Matt, uh, Decrepit Birth, Sotelo. Uh, so I just sent him like a video of me playing one of their new songs off of, not new anymore, but off of Axis Mundi, mm. or I guess the latest album. And I sent that to Mike and then he sent it to them. And then like a couple months later when I was home, I was at work and I got a hit up from Ed Roan, the guitarist of Narcotic uh saying yeah this is my project with dallas from nile and this and that and we got a show with actually it was supposed to be with accept of all bands oh, really? back in 2020 um and i i had to accept <laughs> <laughs> but uh it didn't happen because of covid right and so I actually had like an extra year or so to prepare the music. Oh, cool. Which was very helpful because, excuse me, because I needed like a montage to be able to play it. It was super hard. <laughs> Still is super hard, but like, you know, I've had that montage and now I can, I can do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They've got some, there's some intense drumming on, on that album. So yeah, both albums have some wicked hard, fast shit. And I'm just like, damn, this guy had to have been punching in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some crazy <laughs> stuff. That's so cool that you got on with them. That's great. So you're basically, I mean, you are the touring drummer, you know, obviously. So. Yeah, I'll be like the main guy as soon as, uh, well, because Eric Scholtek, shout out to Eric Scholtek. Uh, he is in Casket Robbery. There's oh, okay. a bunch of Casket bands. Okay. And so I'm making sure that I'm pretty sure he's in Casket Robbery. That's the one he's in. Okay. Uh, a lot of friends and bands that have Casket in the name. <laughs> anyway, but uh, so he is actually commissioned for this next album that we're okay. about to release. Uh, I'll be influencing him little bits here and there by sending him playthroughs of me playing the songs. Oh, okay um but it's it's his commission it's his job to record on this one okay so uh the album that you will hear that's coming out although i will play all the live stuff and have my own versions of them they won't be me on the album oh okay gotcha Makes sense. maybe maybe one of them oh okay. i don't know like I, i've been told a couple of different things but i'm pretty sure it's going to be show tech on the entire album gotcha gotcha but i will do vocals because i do vocals oh cool um i've been that's been kind of our thing like live is like uh i'm actually doing vocals live nice. while playing and that's been kind of cool dallas will step away from the mic entirely and people are like where's the <laughs> where am i hearing this is the backing track and then they finally notice oh way back there is a dude <laughs> singing that's yeah and that's complicated i would imagine especially with the drum patterns you're doing and trying to sing at the same time at i mean it's I a work in progress walk so <laughs> yeah no i've definitely had to practice but luckily i practice with the vocals in my ear mm, okay. like i'm hearing them every time when i'm practicing so when i play it live it's like i know them so it's kind of second nature i guess it's just kind of yeah i'm just kind of singing along but then actually i'm doing the lead in some parts oh, okay cool Nice. You know, I'll uh, shout out to Chris Dupree's lyrics are the ones I do. You oh, know? Nice. Uh, yeah, when he quit the band, I started just doing all his parts. Oh, okay. And for the new stuff, like I wrote in like backups 
and there's some some uh mains and i actually got to write uh the song that we're about to release um spoiler alert it's called victim of the algorithm oh cool uh we played it live a few times that's why i feel like it's okay to spoil it at this point (laughs) when is it coming out uh hopefully before that tour okay nice we're supposed to have one come out in august i think okay uh new new single we're gonna do them as singles first single we need to do our epic single so we can get uh yeah we have some shows in august i think we're gonna release the slow epic cool because uh of except and the nature of rock and roll we don't want to release a blaster (laughs) yeah and then play it with except and come out just like completely different genre of music just fucking blasting the whole yeah, time right. we're gonna play our like slow epics we're gonna you know tantalize the audience a little bit cool you know warm warm everybody up for accept which is like the style of music that they came to see yeah that's gonna be a killer that's gonna be a killer show um yeah i can't wait yeah that's the other set was powerful uh people were really loving it Everybody who saw us became a new fan, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I, I would imagine. I, there's some live footage out there that's incredible. It's just, you know, just even just people with their phones filming you guys. I saw posts, people posting stuff, and you guys sounded great. Just so tight. Um, just a super tight live, you know, just, yeah, like I said, just blast. It's, yeah, killer sound. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been super fun. It's been super powerful, like I said, yeah. Uh nice converting the masses most people just don't know a lot of people don't know that dallas is out of nile yeah i that was new to me when i you know i found out you know a couple months ago and i'm like wait what (laughs) so see right yeah exactly uh i actually found out when i got the offer oh okay yeah it's like yeah it's dallas's project from dallas from nile it's me and his project together and i was like wait dallas (laughs) is out of nile yeah yeah, that was, yeah, I think I found, I guess what I found out was, yeah, I went and saw Nile um, with Incantation uh, a while yeah, back. And, I saw that show. Yeah, yeah, and that's when I realized that, yeah, that Dallas wasn't in the band. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Uh, another yeah. shout out to my homie, Scott Eames. He's been coming up. He is now the new Dallas and Nile. He's now oh, that okay. guy. Yeah, yeah, cool. Which is weird because I, all right, so I played with Scott in his band, Navara. And, uh, so I was playing in Scott's band and Dallas was Dallas. And now I'm playing in Dallas's band and Scott's the new Dallas. <laughs> they kind of split. They kind of like switch spots. It's weird. Yeah, that is weird. That's wild. I feel like everything's falling into place for everybody because yeah. Like Niles sounding pretty sick. And I feel like uh Dallas's writing has gone up. Yeah. Yeah. I love these new, so I can't wait. There's nine songs so far, and I oh, think cool. soon to be a tenth, but we've only released one of them. And we're going to release two more as singles before we drop the album, I believe. Oh, maybe cool. three more, maybe three more. Nice. Can't remember, but uh, I'm super excited for this new stuff. It's so sick. Cool. Like cool. the sickest shit Dallas has written, for sure. Yeah. Ed's got a bunch of sick tracks, too. Nice. Yeah, I can't wait for that album to come out. That's exciting. That's that's really exciting stuff. And that'll be this year, right? <clears throat> or, uh, or year? Hopefully, I think so. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I will not. Uh, that's that's cool. That's cool. That's so cool. So apart from the Accept tour, do you have any other dates coming up with other bands or 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 Narcotic as well? Or do you have any um, do you have anything else? Yeah, there's just. There's some stuff in August for Narcotic. Um, a couple of shows in July leading into August for Fields of Elysium. Oh, cool. But I got to actually start prepping for right now because that shit's super hard to play, super technical. But we're trying to play some new stuff. So, like, I got some a little bit of work to do before I get there. Nice. nice. Um, we all do in that band. Yeah, it's kind of crazy living in different states than your band members. Yeah, that's that's interesting. It's kind of a new concept. I think I I talk to a lot of people now, and that's that's kind of par for the course with a lot of bands now, especially 
with the way that recording happens where you don't need to live in the same state, but I'm sure it sometimes makes things a little tricky, especially with, with practice and, you know, just having to travel a lot. Yeah. Practice and like general writing, the way I've always written is the way neuromorphic writes, you know, me and one of the other band members get together and we will, they'll bring me a riff and I'll be like, that's sick. Let's do that four times or whatever however many times and they'll have another riff and i'll be like oh that's pretty sick but it'll be different so i'll think of like a clever transition and we'll be like what if we take the last part of that riff and then loop that into four times and then we do this and then smash into that or something you know All right uh just a random example that's not real but uh yeah, so like I, that's how I'm used to writing. So it's kind of weird just writing to complete songs. Like, okay, I'll just rewrite the drums then, you know? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I won't even rewrite them. Maybe they're already sick as fuck. Right, right. Uh, so which I'll just try and like embellish here or there. Maybe do some accents. Maybe do my own cymbal work. Maybe add like a little double bass spurts here or there. Something like that. But uh, yeah, it's it's definitely. I actually want to get the narcotic wasteland dudes down here so we could at least write a song or two, like like the way I do it. Yeah, that would be cool. So yeah, but you, and you said the the fields guys are in New Mexico. Is that where they are? Santa Fe, New Mexico. Yep. Oh, okay. So with the the live shows you got coming up, are those going to be local to New Mexico, or are you going to go out? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Santa Fe and Albuquerque where okay. they're at. Nice, nice. For those two. And then there was one with Neuromorphic. Oh, yeah. Uh, Neuromorphic will play, at least I heard. I haven't seen it announced yet. So I guess don't quote me on this either, but we'll play Full Terror Assault. Oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah, the Camping Fest. Nice. Very which, cool. Which, yeah, epic as fuck. I love that fest. Yeah, that's cool. Man, you are a busy busy man <laughs> that's insane um yeah that is cool it's though. nice when i could take off a of word to do it it makes me feel less busy it's weird yeah yeah, yeah i would imagine yeah that's cool though that's cool um well joe this has been great i know you have pancakes waiting i don't want to i don't want to keep you from pancakes. oh you're good yeah whatever however um, long you want to go man no fine. but this is this has been awesome this has been great um so for everybody watching, uh, if you look down in the description, there are some links to, to all the bands Joe plays in, um, you know, oh, so cool. definitely check those out. Uh, you will not be sorry. Killer stuff. Um, and, and I know some of this stuff is on Bandcamp. So if you want to check it out, uh, you know, before you buy it, but you should buy it because it's killer and you will not be sorry. And uh, I mean, one, just for Joe's drumming alone. I mean, you're a monster. It's 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 always a pleasure to listen to you play. Um you know just thanks man thanks and, and kind of mind-blowing too I, it's you know just incredible i mean you you remind and that's actually a question i do have i was curious about kind of your influences as a drummer like who were kind of who were you growing up listening to okay yeah that's actually a question yeah because when i was starting scalafrea me and my brother jacob howard the other the bassist were into uh like pantera and we were like doing like some uh I guess flashback, we were in school. So my brother got into the jazz band and I was not, I was in choir. So I was kind of like just making up alternate funny lyrics and shit, like some gross shit and kind of getting in trouble by the, you know, the teachers. And so I was in the hall one time, like on a timeout and the band teacher came out. He's like, why are you out here? I was like, uh, cause I want to be like in there instead. He's like, what do you play? And I was like, drums you know because my dad had his band i guess even there's i i guess a little more i could tell you my dad was in a band oh, called God. cherry bomb uh and we had visitation with him on the days he practiced for a while oh, cool. and so that's how i actually started playing drums was after practice he would let us get on the instruments or whatever we could fuck with whatever we want and hang out with them Cool. And so Jake gravitated towards the bass. I gravitated towards drums. And then so we were getting into like funk and chili peppers and stuff and jazz and band. And we met these dudes. They were called uh, Dark Reflections, like an older band, 21-year-old dudes. And uh, I was like 13. And so they, they showed us Dying Fetus 
Cannibal Corpse, Suffocation, which just hung out with those dudes, and uh, DSI. Those were the four I first heard wow. that were like, wow, listen to these drummers. What the fuck? And uh, those dudes were playing Domination by Pantera. And that was just a cool, cool, like, hangout on Wednesdays because they jammed on Wednesday. And we'd go over there and hang out nice. at their house. Or Thursday, yeah. And then uh, we formed Scalafrea. And then I met our guitarist, Jaime, uh, on my birthday in 2002. And then uh, he became a full-time member of the band. And then when he actually was about to move to New Mexico to be, because his dad did not approve <laughs> of metal. So he was going to send him back with his mom who lived in like uh, Gallup or close to Albuquerque. Uh, my dad actually adopted Jaime. Oh, wow. So he could stay in Denver and stay in our band. Nice. And that's, that's actually the recommendation. If you're going to go check out some of my old shit, go check out Scalafrea's first album, Ingenuity of the Death Machine. That's... Like us in our, like as teenagers, like in our prime. Nice. Uh, super. It had Dave Otero mix it uh, from Flatline Audio in Denver. Cool. Uh, he's a dude that later went on to, or he already had done a bunch of Cephalic Carnage stuff. And he later went on to do, like he's done the Archspire stuff recently. He's done the Cattle Decapitations latest three albums. And he's done like In Fury. Uh, the roommate Andrew. Uh, yeah, uh, he's nice. done a lot of their shit, so I would I'd recommend that. Nice. But uh, yeah, man, uh, that lasted about sixteen years from then to like two thousand eighteen or so. Nice. Wow. But uh, yeah, very cool, very cool. Um, <clears throat> well, Joe, this has been this has been awesome. Thank you so much for chatting with me um and uh yeah enjoy your pancakes my friend so right on yeah, yeah. for sure cheers cool. thanks, man. Brother. thanks for having me yeah and, uh, honor. everybody out there listening yeah check out uh check out joe playing with uh narcotic wasteland with uh, except in the fall uh hopefully they're coming to a town near you because that is going to be a killer tour um so yeah, yeah have a great evening the, my friend you too man for All sure right. thanks cheers, cheers.